Welcome to Business Leaders Coach, the podcast that educates, equips, enables, and empowers you to grow yourself, your business, and enjoy your life. My name is Toyo Shinbi, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about standing out from the crowd, especially if you're a service business. And we're going to be taking some tips from the book, The Uncommon Service. So if you are a service business, stay tuned till the end as I share some very important tips that can really help service businesses have an advantage today. You know, the research is showing that over 80% of businesses in both the UK and the US that were service businesses. And so today I want to share a few insights uh, from the book, The Uncommon Service by Francis Frey and Anne Morris, The Uncommon Service, How to Win by Putting Customers at the Core of Your Business. And so if you are a business leader, I would strongly recommend that you buy the book, read it, but more important, implement it. This is because we are now moved away from the industrial age of thinking into a new era where people and customers are the main focus. So if there was ever a time to gain the skill to make sure that your business stands out among the crowd, now is that time. Now is that time to start working on your business and making sure that it's fit for purpose in the 21st century. You know, in my last episode, uh, episode 25, I touched on Simon Sinek's charge, uh, the infinite game. And I put a lot more emphasis on his first point, which is that having a just cause. Well, it's obvious that since it's a business, right, if you have a just cause, then the just cause should also be advantageous to your customers. Your customers must be getting value from whatever you offer. However, in today's crowdy and noisy world, the question that we've got to ask is how do we do this? You know, how do we become uncommon because you becoming uncommon means that you stand out of the crowd Uh, a number of years ago seth godin the influential marketer the genius that he is he wrote a simple book called purple cow transform your business by being remarkable now francis and Anne, what they do is that they give us a framework around the service Because when you focus just on marketing, you see what can happen is that we can end up being like the old story of a dog food company where, and this was shared by Henry Cloud in his book, Integrity. And it was about a CEO of his company who has become attached to the company performance and wasn't really happy with the numbers he was seeing. And so he gave some more direction about how we need to push sales and we need to get the brand name out there and the numbers kept coming back and they were not in the direction that he wanted to go and so he fires the advertising agency hires some new people said let's do it in-house pushes the brand changes the packaging has a new look however time and time again the numbers come back and they're not changing the CEO becomes angry. He He's really angry now and he's having a meeting, telling everybody off that what's going on here. And during one of these meetings, a guy puts his hand up by the name of Jones and he says, sir, may I just say something? And the, the CEO, he stops and he feels a bit frustrated that he's been interrupted. He says, so what is it? And Jones quietly says, sir, The dogs, they don't like it. The dogs don't like the food. And the whole place was quiet. And this simply just brings us back to this point, which is that, yes, what we do, we can have a purple cow concept and really get the attention of our customers. They can come to our store. Obviously, the whole idea of 
purple cow is still important today. You know, the whole story is that if you were driving down the road and passing a field and you saw a purple cow, I mean, obviously you will stop and you would wonder where did this come from? And that's the whole idea around that purple cow concept, which is that you've got to do something different. You got to be remarkable, and sometimes we just do that on the surface where we want to get people's attention. But the question is, would you be comfortable drinking purple milk? <laughs> you know, the purple cow must deliver a product or service that keeps us coming back, and that's what I really want the emphasis. Uh, for this podcast to be because as I think about this and as I'm starting as I'm getting a business leaders coach out there I think about what's going to be so unique why would people want to come back for more I know that it's going to be based on the experience that people get and they are being transformed through the training and coaching but I really think that all of us in the service business we we really need to start challenging our thinking to make sure that we are creating a service that doesn't just get the attention of people but that we are offering something that's so unique that people want to come back again and again and again and that's where this book comes in again the first time i read it i thought this is different this is a different way of looking at service businesses and there definitely needs to be a lot more research around service businesses because a lot of the models that we've carried into this 21st century have obviously come from 50, 100 years ago during the industrial age. And so the premise of this book is about being uncommon in our service and it's built on four service truths. The first one is that you can't be good at everything. And we'll talk about that. And in fact, that's why I'm going to put more of my emphasis on this podcast. The second is someone has to pay for it. The third truth is it's not your employee's fault. And then the fourth is you must manage your customers. Now, the most challenging principle that shapes this uncommon service thinking is captured in, in this way. In fact, in the book, they write that to deliver great service on the dimensions that your customer value most, you must underperform on dimensions they value less. And in fact, they go as far as to say, be bad in the service of good by underperforming in areas that your customers value least. And this is simply telling us that in today's world, we can't be good at everything. You know, and we've got to figure out what is it that our customers value. So what this means is that when you take an MPS score of your customers, some will score you very high while some will score you very low. And that's because it creates this dichotomy that what some of these customers and those, those that score you very low, the whole idea behind this is that they are not your core customers. But the ones that score you high are your core customers. And then you need to now go in that direction and continue to find more customers that value those things that they have scored high. And so how do you go about doing this? You ask yourself questions like, who is our customer? And for many businesses, sometimes this is a difficult question to sometimes figure out because sometimes we think that our product or service is for everybody and not realize that actually our custom, our product actually for a certain unique type of people. And, and that's the call today for many businesses is to try and figure out who is that unique person that we're speaking to. Do they value convenience? Do they value uh, interaction? For instance, this is a service business or do they want to simply just get on with it and do it themselves with less interaction? That can really shape your business model. And so you're going to need to decide which area to focus on, right? In order to be able to stand out different because you can't please both crowds. And so focusing on the middle isn't going to help you stand out from the crowd. Overall, these four concepts, these four principles 
are hinged on four questions that they ask in the book. And I'll just read them out because it should get us thinking. Number one is what specific attributes or service are you competing on? The second question then is how is the excellence paid for? And, and the way this framework works is that it's divided into three areas, which is that your service, which is your ultimate product that's adding value to your customer, how you can shape it and how you can find the uniqueness will be in these three areas, either the financial aspect of it or the employee aspect of it or the actual how you get your customers on board in order to deliver that service. And so these three questions that I'm going to ask sort of help you to begin to think along those lines. The first one is how is the excellence paid for? And in the book, they talk about how do you, in a way, turn excellence into a daily routine? So it's not always just hinged on a few people. Sometimes when it comes to service businesses, we can end up finding some unique people that stand out so much from everybody else. But you're going to need to figure out how do we create a consistent way of delivering excellence and how do we then pay for that? The third question is, are employees set up for success? And this is a really important part that I'm going to come back to because I think that this is the part where we begin to think that if we are a service business, then how do we make sure that every customer has the experience that we want them to have. Number four, how are customers managed and trained? Uh, again, this is an important part because in a service business, you can actually get your customers involved in the service and delivery of that service. It all depends on how you want to shape this process. The one thing that I can say is that if you are in a business that involves having salespeople interact with the customer, the thing that will never change is how your staff treat your customers. You know, if that is the case where you've got people interacting with your customers, then you better start investing to make sure that your people become the competitive edge. And this is a secret source that I think as we move forward, we're going to see how important this is that your competitive edge, what can help you to stand out of the crowd is the customer experience that your salespeople or the people that are interacting with your customers help them have. And so let me give you an example very quickly. My wife and I, we've used two different supermarkets for a number of years. We were just using one and the first one that we used, initially the service was okay, but many times they would, before they actually get to our place, they'll call, they'll say they can't find our house. And sometimes on getting to our house, they want to ask us to help bring the shopping in, making all sorts of excuses, can't walk up the stairs, all these things. So it was never really a pleasant experience. Last year, as we were all in lockdown, we decided to look for another supermarket to see if they can deliver when this one was being delayed for so long. And since then, we've noticed a difference. It's been like night and day. Now, the difference, now only once have they called this second supermarket to say we can't find our uh, house. But more important is, is how they interact with us, how they greet us and how they tell us that it's so polite and say, don't worry, we'll carry this in. It was just the experience of interacting with these people. It's the same products that they're delivering, different experience based on the people that we are interacting with. And I think that this is the way forward. As you're thinking about your service business, how are you investing in your people, training them on how to interact with your customers because that is where the experience happens. And as we move forward, as we've said, this research is showing that we're moving into, it's over 80% of businesses are now uh, service businesses. So this is definitely gonna become a very big thing. You know, I happen to work with a number of recruitment companies, for instance, and this is an area where the more we are training the frontline people to interact with 
their customers in this way and managers in particular to keep reinforcing and not putting pressure to close deals, but to really put emphasis on building the relationship as well as obviously doing the business and delivering a good service, uh, that's going to make the difference. And that's what is going to get people coming back for more. So, and I think that this is going to become the major advantage of many service businesses. So a few questions as I wrap up, how can you and your business stand out from the crowd? Is your service uncommon? Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and you can put a comment below to let us know what you think, or you can send me a message at Toye at businessleaderscoach.com. You can go to our website to also watch this. If you're listening to this on podcast, you can actually watch this on video on YouTube, uh, on the website, which is businessleaderscoach.com. And you can also share this with others as well. Uh, as a time of recording, you can also find out some other things that we're doing uh, as well. There's a webinar on remote management. And if you are watching or listening to this after you should be able to see a link in the show notes that should take you to the recording of that. For now, this is Toyo Shumbi for Business Leaders Coach signing off. Till next time, thank you.